hey guys it's Uche and welcome back to my youtube channel how are you all doing hope you guys are doing great and amazing so guys in today's video i'm basically just going to give you guys a little bit of life updates and what i'm grateful for why i'm grateful for what i'm grateful for yeah and also i'm going to tell you guys a little story about my past life and fast forwarding to my present life i guess this video is going to be very interesting so stick around to watch this video sit down get your popcorn i'm about to kiss you guys so yeah before we get this video Please make sure to like, subscribe, turn on your post notifications and all that good stuff. And yeah, let's get right into this video. Hey guys, it's Uche and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hope you all are doing great and amazing. As for me, I'm doing well, pretty well, sitting pretty, talking to you guys. <laughs> After doing this makeup, I decided to come and talk to you guys. You know, I did a heavy day with my auntie. Please go to her channel, watch that video. So guys, in today's video, I am basically going to talk about, give you guys a little bit of life updates. And I'm going to talk about the things I am grateful for for this year, for what God has done for me this year, for what God has been doing for me for the past years, for the past few years, you know. So I am really, really grateful for all those things. But first of all, before we get into this video, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on those post notifications and yeah, let's get right into it. So guys, um, yeah, first of all, I'm going to say thank you to you guys. Thank you so much, you guys, for all the love, for all the support. Even when I, rem I remember like I've not posted in a while, you know. And you guys were like, oh, Uche, where have you been? What are you doing? Are you not posting? Even some of you like were coming to my DMs on Instagram. Are you not posting today? Are you not doing today? <sighs> you guys, a lot has been going on this year. This year, a lot has really been going on. And yeah, here I am. I'm back on YouTube posting videos. <laughs> and I'm really grateful for that, you guys. I'm really happy. I missed posting videos on YouTube. And I want to say thank you to you guys for sticking around with me. Thank you to you guys for always supporting me. Even when I leave you guys for months, you guys still support me. I'm really sorry for all those times, but thank you so much. I'm going to say a huge thank you to you guys. So guys, first of all, I am grateful to God. I'm happy and I'm alive. I'm breathing. I'm healthy. And everything you could think of, okay, God has been so faithful to me. God, have, God has been so good to me since, like, let me say, ever since I stepped my foot into this house, you guys, God has been just amazing to me. Despite everything, I'm happy. You guys, I, I don't even know what to say, to be honest, because I'm overwhelmed by the grace that God has given me, you understand? Because looking back to my past life, when I was in the village, when I was, you know, helping my mom, even when I was in Calabar, I think I told you guys that story in my auntie's video, if you go back to her old videos. I, you know, I was staying in Calabar from Calabar. I came back to the village. I've just been going around. I've never really sat down, not knowing that God has prepared everything I want. Because when I, back then when I was in Calabar, I always go to church almost all the time, pray to God that God, please send me my destiny helper. I think that destiny helper was my number one prayer. Every day, every night, I want to pray. And look at me here, like, I didn't want to cry right now, but look at me. I'm just so grateful. I'm just so happy. And from there, I came back to the village. A lot, a lot happened in the village. From the village, my auntie called me. My sister called me that, oh, you have a job here. Come, come and walk. Ah, because me, I was already preparing to run away from the house. So I was preparing. I even caught it. <laughs> you guys, okay. I've not told my auntie this story, right? I've not told my auntie this story. My auntie does not know about this. I wanted to go and live with a man in Lagos. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know why. I can't believe I've, I'm saying this, but I wanted to go and live with a man in Lagos because of how I feel like, I don't want to say how miserable my life has never been miserable, but something related to that. It wasn't miserable, but I was not just comfortable with everything when I was in the village. You know, my mom, my mom is really strong. My mom is, is my mom does everything for me. I don't, when I'm, in fact, when I'm in the village, I don't do anything. My mom does everything for anything I want, she does for me, right? But then I wanted to earn my own money. I wanted to, I was just, I think I was just 18. No, I was not 18, I was 17. I came from Calabar, I was 16 when I went to Calabar. Then when I came back to the village, I was 17. So even that 17, you know, I dropped out of school in SS2. When I came back to the village, and my mom was like, she's going to put me in school back. That, and I told her that she don't put me in school, I'm going to write jam. Like, I want to just go to lesson and write jam, you understand? And enter university, <laughs> that was my plan. That was everything I planned for. 
and but it didn't work out that way actually it didn't work out that way when i came back to the village my mom was still waiting to put me in lesson but somehow everything was just going wrong i didn't like the way i was living to the extent that i always do everything like anything i any in fact i don't even have okay like my aunt used to say i don't have respect right but i always do things they're using beating me because i was so stubborn i was stubborn because i was frustrated i didn't like the way i was living i didn't like the way I was not making my own money and me I'm not the kind of person that I ask you for money I cannot just come every time I start asking you for money no but because I felt bad for my mom you know she's really trying she's really trying in every way she could so because of my mom gives me everything if it's my soup anything I want she gives me but then me I don't know how to ask for it you know so I had to just do things at some point I started selling mangoes in the village this story this thing I'm saying now is not like my past life I came to give you guys a life update right but now I'm explaining my past life to you guys <laughs> This is funny and this is getting interesting anyways. <laughs> so at some point in the village, I started selling mangoes. I started, you know, when every morning by 5 a.m. I'll go and, you know, pick mangoes, go and sell just to make money. Just how much am I selling the mangoes? I'll sell five. You know this German mango, that green mango. I'll sell five for, I think, five fifty naira. No, four fifty naira. That was what I sell it in the village. I'll go early in the morning, go and sell it, come back in the evening. I've sold mango in the village. I've sold kerosene. I've carried sand i've carried blocks there's nothing i've not carried like there's nothing i've not done just to earn money just to make money and especially when i was in school when i was schooling in the village there was nothing that that sand and block was the one even my mom didn't like she used to tell me not to carry but then i want to make my own money <laughs> This is when, but then I also make my own money. She tell me, don't carry, don't do this, but I will not hear. Early in the morning, I'll go out of the house, carry sand, carry block. I'll carry sand from how much are they paying me for this sand I'm carrying. I'll use a very big basin, the full sand inside. How old was I? I think I was, I was, let's say I was 15, there, 15 to 16. This sand I'm carrying, right? The distance is very far and you have to climb a hill on top of that and you have to go three times before you can end 15 era you guys three times before you can end 15 era oh my god there's nothing i have not done in this life there's nothing i've sold granites cooked granites <laughs> god see when i look back at my life i'm just like i want to cry like that's why most of it if anything happened in this house if anything like me let's say i do something wrong and the auntie yells at me no matter how bad she yells at me all i have to do is look back at my life and say oh my god where am i this is me i can't believe that i'm in this level like the level i am now is, is the grace of god it's just the grace of God. There's nothing else I can explain. It's just the grace of God. Because as of then, even as I'm making all those moments, it's not going anywhere. I can carry sand from morning to from 5 a.m. That's that's when we go, so that they can even accept you. That's how bad it was. I will go from morning to 2 p.m. in the afternoon. All I'll be earning it will not even reach 1,000 naira. And okay, I know as of then, 1,000 naira was not such a small money as of now. But then, what you'll be earning is 1,000 naira. Sometimes it does not even reach 1,000 naira. I'll take it like that. It's not like I'm saving the money for anything. I just want to spend the money. I just want to buy something and eat. I just want to buy something and wear. I just have to buy things for myself too. Because there are some small sort of things I need to buy for myself. But like, and I don't want to ask my mom for it. It's not like she won't give me, but I don't just want to. You understand? So because of that, I will do all those things just to earn that money. <laughs> at some point and so when i came as i came back to the village from calabar later on that because this fast forward to coming back to the village from calabar i really wanted to just start lesson like i said before i wanted to start lesson you know write jam enter school live my life as a young girl that i am but then things didn't work out that way then i started praying asking god that please i want to find a job okay i mentioned that i wanted to go and stay with a man in lagos right that was because as i was in village i was uncomfortable I didn't like village like right from time out. I, I didn't grow up in village. I grew up in Lagos and then I came back to the village from village. I went to Calabar from Calabar. I came back to the village again. So that was my village life was not my thing. I don't like village. I don't even really have friends in village. The only friends I had in village was my um, friends in school. Like for my friends from school when I when I started school in the village. Apart from that, I don't have any. Let's say you know when you have friends, you know you have friends. But I didn't have any. Even if I go to village today or tomorrow, I don't go out in the village. I don't. I'm just that girl who stays with her mom all the time, who stays with her family all the time, who stays around the house. That is how it was. And I really wanted to go out because right because I, so because I've stayed in Calabar, my eyes have opened because that was the first time like 
as well as I'm growing, I went out, opened my eyes and all of that. My eyes have opened. I hated everything about village. I just don't want to stay there. You know when you, you're frustrated about something, you're frustrated about, you're, you're, you become uncomfortable about something. Okay, I know I'm in my family, right? And I'm not supposed to be uncomfortable. But then the village is the problem. So because I really wanted to leave, I had to call this guy um, that was in that was a chorister with me in Calabar. He, he relocated to Lagos, so I had to call him that, oh, I want to come to Lagos, that he told me that I should know that I should come, that he'll find job for me, he'll find work. I believed it. I believed it. I freaking believed it. I don't even know how. Thinking about it, I'm like, what was I thinking? Like, what was I actually thinking? So he now told me that he'll find a job for me in Lagos. He will do this for me in Lagos. Oh, um, come to Lagos, I'll find a job. We'll live together. Thinking about it now, so, okay, I was actually going to live with a man. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my God, <laughs> if, auntie, if auntie hear this story, she's just going to call me and start shouting and laughing and, you know, doing all she could because why would I go and live with a man in Lagos at the age of 17? 17, I'm not 18. Okay, I think I was, I'm not 18 yet. I was 17 years old and I was calling a man, oh, I want to come and stay with you in Lagos because I want to find a job, I want to work. See, this, this one I'm saying is not a joke. I've already planned everything with my friend that I was schooling with when I was in the village before I went to Calabar. I planned everything with her. I told her how I'm going to escape from the house. I told her my brothers, my sisters, nobody knows about this story. Oh my God, I'm dead. I'm really dead. I told her how I'm going to pack my bag and sneak out of the house. From there, I'm going to, you know, find a way to, when I, when I go, I'll tell them that they should not worry, they should not find me again because I got frustrated to the answer that every little thing I do is a problem. If I, if you talk to me, I'll talk back at you. If you do, I'll do back at you. I don't, I stop respecting anybody. I was just super irritable with every single thing. That was how bad it was that. So that, and I, I was saying that, okay, I'll write them a letter. I'll write my family a letter and drop on in the middle of the day. Just like a Nigerian movie. Oh, it's funny. And then when I go, I'll be like, uh, you guys should not look for me. I've gone for good because they always beat me. They used to beat nonsense out of my body. And I did not like it. I felt like I was now big. I was now big. So at some point, my brother was telling me, you have never reached to, you have not reached to use an Android phone. First, I didn't even have a phone. I was using my mom's phone to call. Okay. My boyfriend. <laughs> okay, I didn't have a phone. I didn't have anything. My brother was, my brother was at the age of 17. My brother told me, you have not reached to have a phone. Oh, my God. Can you even imagine that? <laughs> that was just, all these reasons I'm giving you guys is the reason why I really wanted to leave the village. I really wanted to leave. I wanted to leave at all costs. So I arranged everything with my friends. She told me that I can come and stay in her house. Then the next day, I'll move. This is what I'm telling you guys. Number one, I don't have transport. Number two, the man that I was going to go and meet told me that he would send me transport. So I believed that and was actually sneaking out of the house. He said he was going to send me transport that I should be, I should prepare my things. I started thinking about it. I said, okay, this is how it's going to go. This is how it's going to go. I planned everything. But you guys, don't get me wrong. I didn't go anywhere. After planning all those things, all of a sudden, I was like, let me give it a break. Because I was planning on going, like, let's say, once it clocks January, look at somebody that wants to. <laughs> Look at somebody that wanted to ride Jambu and go, and, uh, go to lesson, ride Jambu and enter school. It's me, it's me that was not thinking of running away with a man, going to work like all that. Because I was, every, all my friends that was in the village, all of them has gone, traveled out to go and be working, working for people, working for the sales girl, working this one. And I actually really wanted to go and do that. But my family is not a family you just go away like that. My mom can't even let me step my foot out of the house, you understand? So... Because of that, I didn't go. I kept on thinking about it. I was like, let me give, let me, let me wait small, let me wait small. At some point, as I was waiting small, I was still praying. I was still praying, kept on praying that God, please send me my destiny help. God, please send me who help me. I don't want to stay in this house. I just want to live. I just want to go out and explore. I don't even want to stay in this village. I don't want to be a village girl. All those stuff were coming to my head. As God may have it, is that what they should say? <laughs> I got a call from my sister, more like. I got a call from my sister. She told me that there is a place you need to walk. There's a place you need to come and walk. Oh my, as I heard that news, my head blew. I was like, I can't wait to go. I was ready. In fact, when I closed my eye, I can see myself in the bus moving out of the house to go and see. <laughs> That's how bad it was. I really wanted to leave the house. So 
my sister called me. I was so excited. I was so happy. And I told my mom. I had to tell my mom. My mom told me that you are going nowhere. Okay, my mom told me that you're going nowhere when I tell her that my sister called me. My sister called me to come and walk. My mom told me that you're going nowhere. Imagine telling my mom I want to go and stay with someone. Like a man for that matter, that he wants to find me a job, that he will send me transport. Oh, my mom say, that means in her life, she should die. She will never allow me to go out of the house. Because what's that? What is wrong with you? Where are you going to? <laughs> so when she told me that I'm not going, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay in this house until I finish my school and everything. I told my mom, no, that I, I want to go. That I, kept, I kept on pleading. My mom did not agree. My brothers, my sisters, everybody, even my uncles, oh, even my uncles, I had to call my mom and plead just for her because she said she didn't want to leave me again, that she wanted to, you know, wanted me to be there Why she trained me in school, do everything I want her to do for me. So for me, I just wanted to live. I just wanted to make my own money. <laughs> I just wanted to live my own life. I just wanted to earn something. I just wanted to be that girl that... And meanwhile, when I was planning on going to live in Lagos, what was in my head is that once I reach, once I start working, I'm going to save plenty money. When I save plenty money, I'm going to, you know, send, be sending my, sending my mom money. I'll work for like a year, then say, be sending my mom money sometimes. And then when I come back, I'll write, I'll write whatever exam I want to write, that's jam or anything. I'll write it, then go to school, start school, and then I just wanted to make to, to end something at that point, at that time. So when I told my, like I fast forward to when I told my mom that I want to go, so that she's not going to allow me. Everybody begged her until kept on begging her. She now said, okay, that I can go. That, that was when she agreed, but she was not happy about it. Actually, I want to bring this news to you guys. My mom was actually crying when I told her that when I told her that she should please allow me that I want to go, that she should please be kept on begging. When she finally agreed, she started crying. I was like, she should not cry. And I saw her tears, my heart dropped. I was just like, I want to stay with you, but at the same time, I need to make money and give you. I need to make you proud in life. I need to do something. So we, I hugged her and told her that it's okay, that I'll be fine, that nothing will happen to me, that I'll be fine. You know, because I'm the last one of the house. Now you understand this, the, the point of this story. I'm the last one of the house. So that's why she never wanted to leave me again. Even my sister that I stayed with in Calabar, she begged my mom to release me to her. For one month, my sister was begging because she wanted to give birth. So she needed somebody to help her. That was how I went to Calabar and I, I actually schooled there. So yeah, fast forward to coming here, I got the news then I prayed to God before I, the day before I came to my auntie's house I was praying saying God please because like, I was this stubborn child that you cannot talk and move away I will talk back at you if you say one I'll say five <laughs> that's how stubborn and I was so uh, I just my my the number one prayer I prayed and I begged God and I cried to God for was that God please as I'm going to this place please help me because my family everybody was telling me you do how how can you even work for somebody I don't even think you can work for somebody this one that you're behaving like this in this house how are you supposed to work for somebody I know when my auntie says this she'll say yes I knew you didn't have respect <laughs> <laughs> so, so I pray to God that God, please help me take away stubbornness from my head. When somebody talk, please help me not to talk. Help me not to do this. Help me not to do that. And God answered my prayer in 10,000 foods, you guys. Because when I came, first of all, I was scared. When I came, when I came to my sister's house, I was scared because I didn't know her. She's, she was more like strange to me. You know, I've never stayed with someone that is not my family. All the people I've stayed with, they are my families. Either they are related, we are related in one way or the other. But this one was coming to someone I didn't know at all. And I've, from what I've heard from madams, oh, madams are always wicked. They will do you this, they will do you that, they will do you that. When I came, my auntie was, first of all, she was the most gorgeous madam I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Secondly, she was amazing. She was kind, like she's, uh, what am I saying she was? She's kind, she's amazing, she's beautiful. Man, is everything you could ask for as a madam. But what I will actually tell you is that be ready to collect the shouts. Be ready to collect the shout. Man, never gets tired of shouting. She will shout at you to the extent that <laughs> you remember. <laughs> But then when I came, whenever she shouts like that, the only thing I'll do is go inside and cry and come out. And then when I finish crying, I remind myself that, remember you left the village and you said you didn't want to stay and you wanted to walk. This is your reality. Start facing it. And then I'll come back. Even if I'm crying and she calls me, I'll clean my eyes, sharp, sharp, smile and come out. That's how it is. And then as, as time goes on, it's not, it's not like she started shouting at me immediately. We were good uh, for a year, so three years. 
So yeah, we were, I was going with my auntie. It's not like she didn't shout, but he just when I do something wrong, she just you know shout about it, and then it will pass. She does not carry things in her mind. That was what I loved the most <laughs> because how would I how would I have dealt with it? Well, fast forward to now. With all the stories I've told you guys about my past life, about how things was going for me to now, you should know my level of gratefulness, why I'm really grateful to God, why, I'm, why, I'm, why I have this grace upon my head. I'm really happy. I'm excited. I'm, I'm <laughs> See, all the good things you can think about in this life is what I am now. And I'm just so happy because for the people around me, I'm so happy that I got to meet my auntie. She is my destiny helper and I'm really grateful for all the things that has been happening to me, for all the good things. She has been really helpful to me. You guys, my auntie is amazing. I'm really happy that I have her by my side. I'm really, really happy. I can't afford to, I can't even, I don't even want to think of losing her in my life. For the rest of my life, that she's the person I want to, I want to be, I want to stick around her. She's the person that will give you the best advice you could ever want. I'm really grateful to have my auntie in my life. Like, I can't even afford to lose her, like I said before. I'm really happy that she's in my life because she's, she's this person. You know when God just puts some, okay, let's say people that are married, how God will just bring someone to their life and they'll be like, this is all I want. You understand? That's how it is for me and my auntie. And auntie, I'm, if you're watching the video, I want to say a big thank you to you. And I want to say in everything you're doing for me, may God bless you and increase it for you in thousand folds. That's how grateful I am. And yeah, thank you to you guys as well for always sticking around, watching my videos. And you know, even when I slack, for a long time you guys still come back to watch my videos you guys still encourage me you guys still keep up with me thank you guys so much for always sticking around to watch my videos thank you guys so much for listening to all this blabbing i did in this video and i really hope this video come out come together because i really don't like doing sit down videos because when i'm talking i slack i move on to the other side and then i come back and then i go again and then i come forward which i don't like so this is why i don't do sit down videos but let me know if you guys enjoyed this video if you guys at least understood my story because this is like <laughs> my past life story if you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comment section if i can do more because i feel like the more sit down videos i do the more i learn the more i you know become comfortable with it the more i um what should i say should i say the more i talk straight without slacking because sometimes when i'm seeing something I forget other things and then I'll move to another side and then I'll come back to that. I'm sure that was that's all you guys noticed in this video. And I really hope my auntie posted it though because of that. She might watch it and be like, what are you talking? <laughs> But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and yeah, thank you so much. I look beautiful. I'm happy. Thank you so much auntie for making me look this beautiful. And you guys should please go get this hair. This is Love Me Hair. My auntie has posted the video on YouTube. Go watch this video that she put that we did this hair with. You're gonna love it. You're gonna like it, okay? <laughs> go and watch the video immediately after you watch this one and yeah okay guys i think that brings me to the end of this video and i really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video i really hope you guys enjoyed my story was it interesting <laughs> and yeah thank you so much for watching and i really hope to see you guys in my next video don't forget to like subscribe turn on your post notifications and yeah i'll see you in my next video see you guys <laughs>